What's your name? Adam. Uh, full name, sir? Adamantium. <laughs> like Wolverine? Yeah, like Wolverine. Just give me my driver's license. <laughs> yeah, because the DMV like, like Wolverine? <laughs> Every, that's the thing, though. Everyone knows who Wolverine is. That's true. Point. He's Hugh Jackman. That's who he is. <laughs> He's an Australian who looks amazing and is a snappy dancer. We're good. We're live. Oh, we're, we're live again? Yeah. Oh, hey. Welcome back. Uh, we were just hanging out. Um, cool. So sweet, let's talk about hybrid classes. <laughs> so back to this thing. Um, so this was like my first stab at this, because you know this was one of the features where we we're like, I, you know, we don't know if it fits in scope. Like we don't know if we're gonna get to it. We definitely like we talked about it a lot, but we never really like promised it as part of the core features. We right, were just right. like, I, I don't know. It seems really cool. This was one of the core reasons, one of the main reasons why mm. we cut from four classes down to three classes because of the way that we want to do the hybrids. Um, it creates, with only with three classes, it creates six additional hybrids, the way that we're doing it. Right. Um, with four classes, it creates 12 hybrids. <coughs> um, this matrix gets blown out, and it was like, holy or crap. I think 16. Does it make 16? Oh, it's 16 total classes. Right, total classes. Uh, so the four cores and then 12 hybrids. With this one, we have three cores and six hybrids, and uh, that seemed like enough work to bite off. That's a lot. So yeah. this was my fucking... Whoa, I just totally swore. Drop the F-bomb. Sorry about that. Chad, we apologize. This was my, yeah, I'm sorry about that to any <laughs> gentle ears at home. But it's always I'm trying to work on like, not doing that, and I just when totally, Brad's in the zone, That though. one truly slipped out. That one yeah. truly slipped out. I'm sorry about dropped. that. Um, so this, this but, was I mean, my like, first. So, I, tried, I just tried to say the, the word first. First, well, yeah. I, at least it started with an F. So like this was my Jackman first, this was my first attempt at this feature, and it was like, okay, what's the sort of like minimum feature, what, what's the minimum version of this? Right, and I remember like when we first talked about the game having kids, like pretty core concept to the game, mm -hmm. that having both parents give something to the kids skill-wise was always sort of seemed natural. Like, yeah, it was it a cool sense, idea. Because right? we wanted to, you know, it's like with the, <clears throat> the genetics and the personality uh, traits in the game and stuff, we wanted it to sort of like have a nature versus nurture kind of aspect right. to it. But it did, I think that a lot of people when they play the game, right now in its current form with only the peer classes, they're sort of like, okay, so you don't get anything from the partner? You know, you only get the right, traits, right. you only get the traits, you only get genetics and personality from, from that partner. And, and experience. And experience, yeah. Right. So there's not nothing. Um, but this is a more direct way to be like, okay, these two types of characters have, a, you know, a, a specific character that has mm. like, you know, some talents from both. Like they That's have, true. and it's not just a, um, Somebody asked me on the Steam forums, like, is it, is it just like that uh, roulette thing? God, I forget oh, the name of it. Oh, it just picks a random one. From yeah, there. right. In in New XCOM, they had um, this system that would let you just sort of randomize all of the um, talent trees for your characters. So you'd still have the four main classes in that game, but there instead of, of fixed trees, they would have just like a total randomized like roulette right, of right. whatever in there. Somebody said, oh, is it like that? And I was like, no, it's not like that. It's, uh, you know, it, it's not, and it's not just a straight borrowing. We do some of that where sure, we borrow right. skills, but we come up with like, we came up with like a lot of unique skills um, that are kind of plays on existing abilities from the different, um, from the different classes. So, so the way that the system works, um, I'll try to explain it really quickly because I know some of you know exactly how it works already, um, is that when you have, you'll, have a, you'll always have a primary class and a secondary class. So even a pure class is what we call them. So a pure hunter will be primary class hunter, secondary class hunter. Mm -hmm. um, so every, every character in the game will have primary and secondary and that will determine uh, your, your actual skill tree. So, when new, we start you, when you start the game, you're only going to have pure classes. You only have pure hunter, pure alchemist, pure caper jack. So that'll be exactly as it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you marry two of them together, two hunters will have. Um, so you'll get the primary class from your regent, and you'll get the secondary class from the partner. Um, so if both of your parents are hunters, you will be a pure hunter as well. Right. Um, and that's what people have been playing with so far. So and it's right. Be familiar. Right. Um, so the, the real twist on it is that uh, your, if your secondary character, so your partner, partner um, the other parent that is sort of married into the family, if that character is not the same character as, your, as the regent, then you'll end up with one of these hybrid classes. So for example, like right here, if your, um, if your regent is a hunter, 
and your partner is an alchemist, then you will be a hunter alchemist. Right. I believe we're going to call this a trick shot. All right. Trick All right. shot class. Pew, pew. You'll be a trick shot, and these you know will have this tree instead of this tree, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, there was another question that people had of what if both of my parents are hybrid classes? How do I determine my class? Okay. And that was uh, we decided that you know because um, if you look at all three of these hunters, so there's hun pure hunter, hunter alchemist, and hunter caberjack, all of them will use the hunter armor and they'll all use crossbows. That's sort of like mm -hmm. just, they will, they will look very similar in, in the equipment that they use and the look that they present and the style that they fight. They'll just have a bunch of different um, uh, abilities and, and stuff in there and different stats. And now I've completely forgot what I was gonna say. It's pretty cool. So who's, who, who's who takes a dominant, you're putting oh, so, two hybrids. So if you're putting two hybrids together, if you were to say put a hunter alchemist with a hunter caberjack together, what would happen? I was letting them know you were drink, you've been drinking. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Brad. The world needs to know. The world needs to know. <laughs> it's it is a problem. Um, so we put hundred alchemists and hundred hundred Jack together. Again, you're going to take the primary from the regent and the primary. So so the primary from your regent will become your primary, and the primary from your partner will become your secondary. So really, it's right. like we don't look at the secondaries of either the regent or the partner when we determine what kind of class you're going to be. Um, and there are like some edge cases that feel a little bit weird, but in playing with it, it feels mostly correct. That it's sort of like, like this guy's, uh, so yeah, I think the one that, that feels sort of bizarre is when you have, what is the case that we talked about that was, I remember we hashed this out with Silvio, and there's, <laughs> I think it's when you have oh, a- Oh, you have two mixes. Yeah, when you have a hunter alchemist. And an alchemist hunter. And you, and you marry that to a caberjack alchemist. Okay. So you have a hunter alchemist regent on the throne, and then you marry in a caberjack alchemist. So they're both going to have like explosive abilities that have come from the alchemist. But then the kid that's created using the system that we have will end up being a caberjack or a hunter caberjack. Because right. again, it's the primaries that we look at distributing. So it's like even though both of the um, both the region and the partner kind of know how to use explosives. They don't teach the kid how to use any of the explosives, I guess. It's just sort of like, yeah, there's all that, you know, they focus more on their like core, like the trunk of their bloodline being passed down. And I think that's fine. And in playing with, playing it, it totally works out. And I think that, it, um, that it'll feel pretty intuitive as you, as you go through the game. One kind of functional benefit that gives is our relic passing. Yes. You talked about wanting to pass down a relic to people in your family pretty much through the, you know, the, the regent tree and who the, who the regent's children right. are. In that case, your children will always have a bow. Yep, and so that, was, always pass that, that was a that. major reason for going with this system, uh, six hybrids rather than, oh man, is it only three hybrids? If you did it the other way, oh, I believe okay. there, so, so there's yeah. another way to do this system where it doesn't matter who the regent is or the partner is. Right. If you take a hunter, a hunter alchemist and an alchemist hunter, they're exactly the same, they produce a brand new class, you know, whatever. Right, they produce right. a, you know, an extra class, great. The problem with that is that if that character, um, and it'd clearly be, I don't know, some sort of melee, hiding sure, yeah, melee yeah. guy, I don't know what it would be. I was gonna say a ninja, but ninjas are really played out. It would not be a ninja, don't That's worry. surprise, it <laughs> If it's not a ninja, don't worry it's about zombie. it. Zombie. It would be a zombie, right, or a pirate. It would be right. all any of these uh, space, played out things. Marine. But it would be something, great. Uh, but if it didn't use a bow, it would get really weird. And it's like, would it use the bow or would it use the hunter thrower claw thing? Like, I don't know. Yeah, a trebuchet. And it would get, yeah, clearly it would use a tiny trebuchet yeah. that it would hide inside. And yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, uh, apropos of this, Nerdsworth mm -hmm. Academy, our old buddy that we have. Nerdsworth! Here. Thanks for playing the game. It was awesome dropping yeah. into your stream last time. Yeah, it was really cool. Oh, and also, another major thing we're going to do is work on the performance on the strategy yeah. layer when time is ticking. Oh, We're gonna right. try to get to this because I saw that on, when Nerdsworth was playing about 260 years into the game, it was slowing to a crawl. So yeah. we're gonna try to get that. Yeah. Okay, it's a lot cheaper than us sending Nerdsworth a better, a better video card. <laughs> oh, fine, Nerdsworth. Uh, so he asks, what happens if the regent dies during training? Another regent is assigned that is a different class. I mean, at the time of birth, you just mm -hmm. look at the snapshot of who the current. Yep. Regent so we decided right? that yeah. the that your class is decided at birth, um, and then if you marry a different, so you appoint a new regent. So that's the thing is that the regent will be, you know, again, that house is bound to that house. Right. 
you can only put somebody of the same house in there. So let's say it was a, a hunter alchemist that died. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, I need to replace somebody in there. It's going to be somebody who uses a bow. It, as long as the family is still alive, it will be either, the children will either be pure hunters or they'll be hunter caper jacks or they'll also be hunter alchemists. You put them into position and then any relics stay within that family and everything's cool. Now you right. could, like in this example, let's say the kids were hunter alchemists as well, uh, their regent dies and then you take like the uncle and you put the uncle in and he's a pure hunter and then you marry a hunter into that family, the new kids will be pure hunters, right? right? But, so you'll have pure hunter kids alongside those hunter alchemist kids that are a little bit older than them, mm -hmm. and they'll kind of grow up. And so in that way, like, like hopefully this gives you even more variation. Um, same if, thing if the regent remarries. Same thing if the regent remarries, like yeah, that, if this, yeah. If the if the partner dies and then you marry somebody a right. different class in, right. then those kids, which would be like um, half siblings with the, the ones that are in there, mm -hmm. uh, those, char those characters would, pro would be of a different class. Um, while you're at on this page, I think before we before we move on, can you explain some of the color coding? A lot of the guys yeah. are asking about it. Yeah, sorry about this. So so the the pure ones. So you see the primary classes go down uh, the left is, side. This is old design. And this is the old one. This is the old one. This is the old crappy design that I did by myself. Um, so the secondary class goes along the top. So you see this right here is hunter hunter. So that is a pure hunter. And then you've got um, alchemist alchemist pure alchemist. And then uh, caper jack, caper jack, pure caper jack down here. So those are in gray because those are the like skill trees that everybody's used to, and those are the characters they're playing with now. Um, so if we look at this one, like the hunter alchemist, this is a brand new tree. We started with a clone of the hunter tree. So just clone uh, all these gray ones and put them right here, and then started looking. Um, so really, what I what I started doing was just looking towards the pure alchemist. Be like, which things can we actually like borrow? Which ones can we straight up borrow? So it was like, oh, the eagle eye, like giving you more accuracy, like that seems fine, um, and more range. And then this uh, second item, like having two items, everybody loves two items. Everybody. That's one thing that we found about everybody. our design is that we have a lot of items in the game. Some people want five or six. And some people want five or six equipped. So it was like, hey, maybe we can sprinkle that one around a lot. And then we were like, okay, also just looking at like a hunter, you know, so somebody whose regent was a hunter and their partner uh, was a um, their other parent was an alchemist. It seems like oh, like exploding arrows. That's like a slam dunk. So we'll make a brand new skill that lets you sort of like use alchemist explosions in a more like direct fire way. Boom, that's it. Um, so that's kind of the coloring on this. The yeah. Blue, so blue the, is kind the of blue ones are borrowed from the secondary class. Like that wedding right. thing. Something borrowed. Something, something borrowed. Blue. Something borrowed in. Yeah, I guess it's, bro it's both borrowed and blue. Yeah. And then these uh, these yellow ones are. Does that even look stuff. yellow on the stream? Yeah, yeah. I it's, like to use nice pastels. Off primaries. That was yeah. That's that's my number one spreadsheeting tip for anybody. Big uh, shout out, out to there. Brad Muir Interior Designs. Uh, just amazing with color palettes. If you're in the just, Bay Area, just it blows your mind. Um, so yeah, so this exploding arrow is like a brand new skill that is sort of a combination of like hunter stuff and alchemist stuff, but it's like a brand new thing that doesn't exist in the game. So you see, I kind of kind of went through every one of these classes and made sure it at least had like three things that were different on its tree. Um, you know, like the, this one was actually very difficult for us, the Caper Jack Hunter, we didn't really come up with, like I couldn't come up with uh, abilities that felt brand new that were sort of a mix of the two. So you can see that one like had three blue things. So they were just purely borrowed um, from the Hunter. Um, but yeah, we kind of, we looked at this and, uh, and had a discussion about it. And we were like, is this cool enough? So one, one thing that you noticed- It wasn't cool enough. Wasn't cool enough was, the, was absolutely the answer. If you look at, um, if you look at the trunks of each tree, um, really what you want to be looking at is like down here, down here, and down here. Uh, I didn't change those at all. So that's um, the level one ability, which is not technically on the tree in the game. It's just kind of the thing you get out of the, uh, off, the off the bat. The level two right. ability and the level 10 ability. Um, I didn't change any of those um, for any of the hybrids in this design. Just because changing one of these, it feels like if you, if you were like, okay, if we change the Hunter Alchemist follow-up, uh, it seems like we got to change the Hunter Caber Jacks follow up as well because that seems weird. And then we're like, oh crap, we should really redo everybody's. And then it sort of balloons out. Uh, and I, I wasn't sure we were going to be able to do that just like just from a, like a raw execution uh, standpoint and like scope and budget and all that stuff. So this was a design I took to the team. We talked about it. Uh, hey, we talked about it, and we were like, it's not cool enough. Uh, what can we do to make it cooler? 
And so this is the current design that's like in the game, and all of this is implemented, which is super rad, and we're going to show it to you in about a minute. Um, You're probably going to throw something out there. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, our old friend, some nerd, uh, makes a pretty interesting statement. I think it, you, you, you talked about what we're about to ask, but uh, and this is a good thing to address to the crowd. Hybrids seem less like a tactical decision, he says, and more like a consequence to make people more unique. These are very much tactical decisions, though. Like these affect your strategy play. These, affect, yeah. these are these are concerted efforts, right? For sure. Yeah. I mean, I what I'm hoping is there will be um, this will put a lot more stress and pressure if you want a particular character, if you want a particular class. Let's say you like you totally love the alchemist hunters, you know, because you're like, oh man, I love the super long range that they have, and yeah. well, that's awesome. Their right. smoke bombs are awesome. That I love that. So when you're looking to marry a character into your alchemist thing. Now it's like you're looking not just for a bag of stats, you're also looking for, it's narrowed down to like hunters that have the best stats. Right, right. Like I can't just grab the person who has the best stats and marry them in. Uh, if I really want that thing, it, it does. So, so it's like, I mean, they're both related, right? I see what he's saying. Sure. I, I definitely see what you're saying. Well, I see it a little um, bit the other way too. So you've got a, you know, a hunter and he's got a really high intelligence. And his kids are hunters and they have high intelligence, but what good is that doing you for a hunter? Right. You might think, huh, if he was a hunter alchemist, that intelligence would play off with his explosions, yep. get more damage. I want to find this guy a partner who's an, you know, mm -hmm. an alchemist. Yeah. So it's really making that partner picking, if it wasn't fun already, even more fun. You know, like as far as like yeah. looking at candidates and stuff. Yeah, it definitely makes it more interesting. There's also um, <clears throat> a thing that I like that, and again, we haven't tested this a lot. This one needs a lot of testing, so I'm not sure when we're. You know, we talked about maybe we'd be able to deliver this next week, but it's looking like we probably won't be able to deliver right. it next week. And like, and then Christmas happens, and then it's like, oh, exactly. I'm sorry, the holidays happen. The holidays. That's the right. holidays happen. Whatever holiday you want. We have a menorah back yeah, here. Yeah, we're pretty international. We're, yeah. We don't have like anything else. But, we need uh, something Kwanzish. We're yeah, we're building this out for yeah. international yeah, yeah, holiday yeah. theme. We'll, yeah. we'll get, get to everybody. Yeah. We'll get to everybody. Um, Got a chalice. Works. <laughs> chal works for everything. Chalice yeah. works. Yeah. For also, this big sock. If you're into, yeah, uh, we probably have a Festivus poll around here too. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we're into all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I like how it, um, like if like let's say you are going against like a bunch of seeds and cradles and you want more AOE damage. I like that you don't necessarily have to take an alchemist now. Yeah, you could be like, oh well, I've got this Caberjack alchemist. He's got explosions, and I've got this hunter alchemist. Cool, and I can just take those guys in and and feel like I've got the AOE stuff covered. So I really like that. Or also, if you're like, oh man, I really want you know more scouting on like the, I think the alpine level. What do we call it? The augers. I feel like yeah, I like yeah. I really like hunters on that level because they can like stealth around, and there's like lots of trees, and you don't want to get caught off guard there. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to take a hunter. You can take a caberjack hunter that has stealth, and you can use him as your scout during that mission. And it's like, cool, maybe you don't have to take hunters. You know, it's like, it's like everything gets a little bit more um, kind of squishy, right. which I like. It gives you more freedom uh, to, to approach each thing. It also, um, I think the other consequence, the, like on the consequence side that he was, he was talking about, I do agree with that as well. So I agree with both things, actually. I disagree with him and I agree with him. That because you heard it here first. sometimes you're going to put... <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the game already, like the, the, one of the core tenets of the design is that you do not get the perfect party that you want for every mission. Like the game forces you through uh, the age system, like through characters aging and dying, the game really forces you to like not have the perfect party in every engagement. Right. Um, and now this will just be another way because if you are, if you are really doing your marriages for uh, traits only, then you're gonna get all different flavors of characters, right? You're gonna be bouncing around this thing. Sometimes you're gonna have alchemist caber jacks, sometimes you're gonna have pure alchemists, sometimes you're gonna have alchemist hunters. Like, they're, you know, your alchemists are gonna be different <clears throat> in almost every fight. Yeah. Um, and then the flip side is, if you're like, no, 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 I only like pure alchemists, I don't want the other two flavors, then you're, it's gonna just be much more difficult. Your characters are gonna have worse traits even though you're getting to play the way that you wanna play. That's how we draw it up. I hope that it works out that way. We're gonna test, you know, do a lot yeah, more yeah. testing on it and, and stuff. We're finding it also gives you more tools in your box when you're going to a battle. When you see what type of enemies you're gonna take on, you'll know cer certain character classes work better against certain enemies than other ones. Mm -hmm. And now you have a few more choices to pick who might go out. You might have been holding back that alchemist hunter against a certain enemy type, but now if there's a battle with that, you pull him out. So hopefully it'll right. get you pulling out a few more of your 
kind of secondary characters that yeah. really weren't your front vanguard. But and what's interesting is you can go back to pure classes, right? Like if you had like a Absolutely. hunter, yeah. alchemist, hunter, caberjack, you marry them. They're having hunters, pure hunters. Mm -hmm. So and right. that's definitely how it's set up. Is that you know we we talked about that one like sort of weird case, but the yeah definitely the way that it's set up is that. The pure classes, we start you out with them, but really, uh, kind of as I was saying at the very top of it, they're, they really have a primary and a secondary class as well. You know, they're hunter hunters, alchemists, alchemists, and caberjack, caberjacks. Right, right. And so they're treated in the system just the same. Like this matrix, it, like, it's just a super simple, straight up matrix, and it should be really easy to use the pure classes if that's what and you want to use. And a couple things that we don't show in this matrix is that you've also done a pass on the stat progression for mm -hmm. all the classes. So. A hunter alchemist will probably have a little bit better intelligence as he levels up than yep. just a pure hunter. And Caber Jack would have a little better strength, mm -hmm. that kind of side. So, um, yeah, in addition to just these skills, the classes kind yep. of are a little bit more unique in that you'll see their stats spread out a little bit differently. Jeff's also been working on the armor sets for him. Yeah, so yeah. We'll totally show that later. Oh, wait, don't look at this. Okay, I thought we would go through. Sneak peek. While you're, while you're loading this up, Brad, uh, one thing that's interesting is people are wondering, like, so what are the names going to be, right? And oh, God, what are the names going to be? We're brainstorming right know. now, right? Yeah, we have a thread on the forums. <clears throat> um, there are a lot of names up there, and I think that only a couple of them do I really like. I really like uh, Trick Shot for the Hunter Alchemist. I really like that yeah. one. Um, we'll get to that guy. And I really like, actually, this character right here. So this is a Caberjack Hunter uh, Shadow Jack for this character. I think it's super cool. Um, for this class, because the core thing that you can do with uh, with Shadow Jack, I'm just going to start saying it. Um, the core thing that they get is a stealth stealth move. It's so weird though. When Chad was in the MMA, though, that was his name, Shadow Jack. Shadow Dawson. Jack, yeah. So Shadow Jack Dawson. There's some naming rights here, but this, we'll talk. Um, so that's kind of cool that you can like you can stealth your uh, stealth your Caber Jacks around. And if we let's let's take a look at the tree right here. Maybe. Okay, so so they actually get stealth right at level two. And it replaces, um, what does it replace? It replaces knockback. charge now. Oh, charge, right? yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So they still have knockback. Uh, they don't have charge. They get this stealth. And that felt good because it's like you're replacing, um, uh, you're replacing it one mobility with mm -hmm. another, another type of mobility. So it feels good. And like being able to um, stealth around and, and scout is super great. Um, at level two, this is, I think I'm going to have to keep tabbing back to this thing because it's hard to keep these straight in my brain. We're down here on the Caber Jack Hunter. Mm -hmm. So here, um, we, re we took out Fury and replaced it with that Put It Down, which gives you like anything that's more than half injured, you get a big damage boost. That was from the Hunter side. That's yeah. from the Hunter side, and that felt really like assassinate -y. You know, it felt mm -hmm. cool to sort of like put on this guy. Um, and we kept the rebound, so if you want to if you want to take that over the Put It Down, you can totally do that. Um, at level six, um, we kept the log jam, so this is the new like AOE, uh, no stun, sort of like just pure AOE damage. Um, we kept that. Um, we added this new ability called Sneak Attack, which is, uh, so this was an old hunter idea, which was that you would just have like a special attack that you could do out of stealth that would right. do a ton. It actually used to be the level 10 ability for a hunter was like, oh man, do sweet, do tons of damage out of stealth. The problem with that is that it's so easy. When we, when we took all the chains off of stealth and it became 100% unlimited, you could stealth as much as you want, it, um, right, right. Uh, it became like just a no-brainer. You would always do a stealth move and then shoot the guy with like your, your kind of special stealth shot and it was just like, it was just not really a decision. Removed it and then we kind of brought it back for this character where it's like, because it's so much harder to like stealth up to an enemy and then do a melee attack, we were like, okay, it fits really well here. Like, there's actually interesting gameplay. Also, if you see this, like, these are the new ones don't have icons yet. So we're just using that like pathing icon as the placeholder for right, it. The default. Um, at level eight, uh, we what did we cut out here? I believe it's the fortify. So you still have the stand ground, but um, in place of fortify, we took the hearing um, right. from the hunter. So again, that'll just make him an even better scout. Uh, and then we left the level tens alone for all of them. So we still have kill rage at level ten. So this is like a level eight, um, uh, a level eight shadow jack. So it plays neat with that honed hearing. Um, yep. You, if you hear a guy right around the wall and you can actually path to him and you're in stealth, yep. you can stealth attack to a spot that you're hearing a guy and you'll get a sneak attack on him, which is sort of a neat combo I hadn't ever really tried before. Yep, and then here's probably not the smartest thing, but I'm just gonna use the sneak attack, sneak up on this dude and just get him for like a billion. Um, yeah, we have this just doing a ton of damage. 
Oh, that was weird. I guess I spawned a bunch of dudes, so this is this is definitely like full of debug stuff. Um, the other thing that's cool about that is that usually, um, you know, we have the same rules for re-entering uh, stealth as the hunter. So, you know, if you run up to a dude and really really nail him with that uh, that sneak attack, you're probably not going to be able to stealth away. But like, that's usually okay because you're hunter and you got more um, you got more armor and stuff. But that's cool. It's true. And one thing we're seeing with the classes is some unique combos. The uh, Cable Jack Alchemist with the Stealth Bomb can kind of help you get around that, mm -hmm. that sight. I love that effect on the, the Poison Caber. Yeah, so here's, uh, here is the Cable Jack Alchemist. Um, don't have a good name for this one yet that I like. You got, you got one that's your favorite? Uh, I forget. It's I'll tell you, I got them I got I got here. I got the ones out. that I like. Boom Jack, Riot Jack, Blast Jack, Jack Thunder knife, Jack. Vi oh, Jack Knife. Jackknife Jack is pretty sweet. good. Splatterjack or a blast, I thought that said blast crapper. Yeah. A blast capper. We've all been there. A uh, blast capper. <laughs> blast capper's pretty good, actually. I, I kind of like that one. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna like bowl a damn breaker one. when it's like, <laughs> blah! <laughs> Oof, yeesh. Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so, so this one, like, we actually replaced um, the level one ability, uh, which is the knockback. We replaced it with this exploding caber. So this is, uh, again, limited use, just like an alchemist. Um, but, you know, doing heavy damage, and then when you left click, you actually see a preview. Um, this one was a little bit tough because... The directional explosion. The directional explosion stuff. So this is a new feature that Chad put in, and you can see, like, in this, like, as I adjust the position, if you're doing it diagonally, it feels really good, actually. It's hitting um, six squares, so three across, and then the one behind the guy, and then the two sort of in the middle, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So when you hit him straight on, I feel like it... It feels a little bit less good. It doesn't feel as conical, but it's still hitting one, two, yeah. three, one, two, three. Depends on the lineup yeah. of the enemies, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's yeah. a good shot. That's and that's cool. Shot. So it's like. Um, the key thing being, it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't hurt you, right? right. Yeah. Exactly. But it will have friendly fire in these, so you have to be kind of careful with it. Um, also, this one, even though it's limited use, so you get this AoE and you also get. Um, no glancing blows with this one. It's always going to go off. So this is like a super, super um, accurate uh, alchemist explosion, assuming you can actually like get in range with it, right. which is which is like really interesting. And like you, you were saying earlier, if you have that brainy trait, I don't know if this guy does, um, but if you had the uh, increased intelligence on your caber jack, you would actually like the explosions would hit yeah, for a lot more. Right again. Yeah, I mean one thing to note on him, if you look kind of at the armor that Jeff did is he's got the Alchemist stuff on him. And with the Caberjack Alchemist and the Hunter Alchemist, if you think of them both as like carrying flasks, like the uh, Alchemist is, they can run out. Mm -hmm. So even at the final battle, they can refill, like the Alchemist can. Um, but uh, they definitely have some limited use stuff, but more power, like the Alchemist. Mm -hmm. And they get the friendly fire. So it, it pulls them a little bit that direction, where it's a little bit more of a wild card, but a little bit more AOE. Okay, um, what else has he got in his skill tree? Some of the other stuff here. Uh, so we took the double items and we put it up right, in the yeah. uh, uh, thing and everybody is you know, into double items. We put acid in place of the log jam. Also, right. another thing that I tried to do, um, so if you remember the other Caber Jack hybrid doesn't have fury but he has a rebound. This guy doesn't have a rebound but he has fury. So we tried to like sprinkle it around so that only two, uh, two of the three of this particular character would have any one skill, if that makes right, sense. Right. Um, uh, at level six, in, in place of the log jam, we have the acid stuff. You can see it like on the caber. That really helps with glancing blows. I mean, you see that sure. with um, with the alchemist. You know, a lot of people really like it against like bulwarks and stuff like that. Um, here, this is probably one of my favorite things. Uh, we made a skill called B bound, which is uh, rebound and the B jar put together. Um, <laughs> So I'm gonna end the turn. It's a little beehive on the chest plate. Yeah, there. every time you get smacked. Every time you get smacked by one of these enemies. But if you're going to remember one thing, don't let those um, you will actually spawn it, it's melee attacks only, right? When you get hit by a melee attack, you'll spawn uh, one tile of bees right on top of the guy that attacked you. Um, so you see when these seeds go to swing at the um, you see a little like bee swarm get put right on top of the uh, the guy. Um, it's a little this is bit kind of a dick move. It's kind of a dick move. Yeah, it's just sort of like, oh yeah, check this out. And um, bees. And bees. So the thing about these, like, 
uh, we also put in one additional feature. There they go moving and spawning new, uh, new things. So the bees move during the neutral turn, which happens after the enemy turn. Right. And then uh, they will deal damage to any character that's standing on top of them the turn uh, at the beginning of their turn. Right. So right now, like if I just, another thing that we did is that we made sure, so, so since the bees move immediately after the enemy turn, uh, this is normally fine with the alchemist because you throw the jar in your turn mm -hmm. and then yeah. it damages them at the start of their turn and then they move at the end of their turn. Great. Mm -hmm. So this feels a little bit different than that in that like nobody's taking damage from these bees but they're out there and they've already moved. So uh, what we found was you would get hit and the bees would get made uh, so that's on the enemy's turn and then the bees would move and sometimes the bees would move onto your guy right. and it was the worst and you're just like this is terrible. So we put in one extra rule that works for alchemists and now the um, cable jack alchemist is that a bee will never move onto its owner. So right. you, you've got mastery over your own bees is like how it works out. They'll still um, sting you if you run on top of them. They'll still sting you if you run on top of them but I moved into a tile that doesn't have any of them on there and now you'll see uh, these bees just totally wreck these guys. <laughs> Which is great, and then they're going to move at the end of uh, this enemy turn here, um, but they will not move onto my caber jack. We'll so see it's how interesting. It's we'll see how good your code is, Chad. Let's see how good your code is. Chad's lock, so lock solid. Yeah, I found this awesome little uh, this little spot where there were no bees. Also, when bees move, they have a spawn. They have a chance to spawn more bees. Right. They last a um, few turns. So that guy's going to get hit by bees. So it's interesting with the bees because it's. Not like rebound, it's not instant damage. Right. But it's much more damage over time. Yep, and there you go, they moved and, and they did not. And if it kills him and another guy comes in to attack you from melee range, he's running right into the bees. So and it's, he'll get it next turn. But yeah. it also, the bees spread, so there's a little danger. It's that, it's that whole alchemist side where it's, you get a little bit of danger from your own stuff. Oh, but uh, at least oh, now they won't really directly come up. after you. Also, as a Caber Jack alchemist, I really like that you can, you know, you can get that two items um, I put haste hooch on this guy, right? Um, just because it's awesome, and it really helps melee guys out alone, or, or it really helps out melee guys. Yeah, guy. And it's kind of cool that you're like, you can carry your own haste hooch. You don't have to have somebody else give it to you, and then, but you don't have to forsake your other item slot, um, and that's super rad. So um, that is the. Also, uh, one thing I just realized is that the drunkness, like haste hooch, makes you drunk, but it doesn't really matter if you're using that exploding caber because you can't miss. You can't get a glancing blow on it. So your accuracy goes down. Okay, awesome. You think you've ever had exploding caber performance issues when you're drunk? Because <laughs> I feel I have. Maybe we could work it in. Um, let's check out the hunters. I got this stuff all set up. This is great. This Mary is... Magiery. Okay. Yeah, Mary Magiery. Okay, so this right here is, let's Mary start with that other one. Start with the other I'm one. Like here shop. is a um, alchemist caber jack. No, I'm sorry. Hunter, okay. Hunter Caber Tech. I've seen these names so much that's really confusing the crap out of me. We gotta get the new names going. We gotta get the names I know. Going. Do I have a name for this one? Oh wait, what were we just looking at? Hunter okay, Caber we talked Jack. about those. So Hunter Caber Jack, Ambusher, Bushwhacker, Roughneck, and Crack, crack Shot. Crack, crack Shot? shot. Oh. Crack Shot's kinda sweet because you crack them over the head, but you're still a good yeah. shot, you know? Kinda yeah. also you shoot them right in the crack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's like uh, amazingly skilled. Uh -oh. My crack is huge. So you got okay. your trick shot and your crack shot. Those are kind of close <laughs> I, I really like trick shot for the other one. Um, so let's take a look at it. So we replace. Um, so all of the um, all of the hunters have stealth. We just thought that like it was too core to the actual thing to have uh, stealth, but we mix it up significantly at level two. So you'll see that on their trees. So on uh, this dude, this hunter caberjack. You've got uh, knockback arrow at level two. So this was kind of a slam dunk. It was like, take the caper jacks knockback, put it on a ranged attack, boom, awesome. You should try it on that rupture over there. I yeah, totally yeah. will. Drop the hammer, be Rizzle. Can that be your in-game name? No. no so see, this idea. is not a great place for putting it. I'll use it here anyway. But really what you want to be doing, we made it so it's not a guaranteed stun. You'll have to smash a dude into something in order to stun him. Um, and so that did not knock him back far enough to get stunned. But uh, that's just on a couple turn cooldown, and so far it's been really, really useful. Being able to like, you know, just stun somebody from really far away, especially against bulwarks, has been awesome. Um, I've been using that guy a lot in my current uh, in my current run, and it's 
really fantastic. Hey, Brad, uh, another great question while you're while you're walking us through these. Uh, Anitis uh, asks, is there any worry that since the hybrids share several skills with their primary class, a player can just pick almost all the same skills as the primary guy, and they won't really be that different? I, I mean, I really think that that's like that's up to you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's. Remember, for every skill that comes from the secondary class or is brand new, that's replacing something in the other guy's in the guy's tree, right? Yeah, it's a swap out. So it's yeah, like yeah. It, you know, you're not getting everything that you get out of like say you really like um, uh, you really like rebound on the caber jack, but you have a caber jack alchemist and he doesn't have that at level four, and you're really used to getting that at level four. Yeah, yeah. You can take fury, which is from the base class, but y you know, it's like double items is the is the thing that replaces that rebound, and then. Yeah, so it's like I don't think that you'll be able like to this just too, do it. Like you'll never get follow up with this guy, right? So Correct. The hybrid class and I use that by itself forces yeah. you to be different, even at the first level, where you only have one choice. Um, so again, trying to make a more close range hunter uh, with this guy, with the hunter Caberjack, we have this point blank shot that you can do, which is basically like a melee attack that I just like gives you, you the pop pop a huge damage yeah. boost, and we'll you have to run on that name, Anthony. You yeah. have to run right up to the dude. Uh, oh, and shoot him point blank, One down. Um, which is like kind of awesome. It makes you play the character very different because you're used to um, uh, you're used to keeping your hunters as far back as possible. But um, with this one, yeah, and it does more damage. One point five, I think. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a beefy thing. We also put fortify up here. We thought this would be really cool. Level eight skill um, that replaces. Where am I here on this thing? That replaces the far sight because the far sight felt like it was definitely, uh, you if know, more of a longer range, range kind yeah. of thing. And if you're like a close range guy, we should just get that out of there. But this is kind of cool because you can actually like um, fortify your ranged characters um, and make sure that their like armor is high when they're you know in a bulwark kind of standoff. It's really useful. Um, and then what else do we have? Let's see. I just end the turn. There's one more thing I want to talk about. This is actually a change to the. Um, to the base hunters is that we split the flero in half. The flero was much better than the um, uh, hobbling shot. Right. So we decided to just kind of like get rid of the hobbling shot functionality. Just most people were not using it, um, and we split it in half. And half of it you see here with the uh, blinding shot. You only get a couple of these. Um, you only get a couple of these. But it's a zero damage shot that when it hits a guy, it will blind the characters that are that are there. You need um, you need line of sight for it, so it's not like the flare where you can arc it over a really long distance. Right. Um, but it gives you that blinding effect that's re that is really useful. I think a lot of people are using the flare for that. Um, the flare remains; it loses that ability to blind people, but um, you know still reveals a gigantic area, and you get many more of them. So it's like if you want scouting, that's the you know you'll have to sort of pick between this more offensive like. Are uh, like debuffing guys, and then the like right. um, the more scouting stuff. I still don't know if people like. I'm not sure if people will actually take the flare um, because your guys can already stealth. Like we'll see. We'll see if people end up using it or not. Um, I think that that was everything on uh, Hunter Alchemist. Still yeah, has some stuff you yeah. have to take, check out. Yeah, we haven't really looked at this dude yet. Okay, Hunter Alchemist again still has stealth at level one. The crop has, um <laughs> We'll get to that one. Uh, so flash shot at level two, replacing follow up. This is very. Um, this was another one of those like slam dunks, where we were like, okay, you know, you have to be able to shoot the, um, you know, it's like the rocket launcher kind of kind of thing. Right. So one thing that's really interesting about it is that with an alchemist, you would choose to throw it right in between these two characters, right? But uh, with the shot, you know, since it is a direct fire and not an arcing thing, I can't actually hit both of these guys. Right. Even though it's a, target. Yeah. Sure. Even though it's a three by three around that. But the the bonus is that I get to do it at a much longer range and usually at a much higher accuracy um, right. compared to an alchemist throwing at their like max distance. And you could still shoot like a shatter rock or exploding bush. Yep, yep, as long as you have a target, it'll go off. And so that one feels very... Um, and if you miss, nobody dies. And if That's you miss, nice nobody thing. dies, right. It'll yeah. just kind of go off into the distance and, and just explode. Yeah, I didn't notice you still hear the explosion. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and the screen shakes and yeah. stuff, it's <laughs> awesome. It's nice that it just, it, it's nice when it just works out that way. Um, we also have, what else do we have on this dude stuff? So double items, um, we have that on uh, at level four, which is great. Um, then we have this uh, shoot items, right. which is a variation, again, of like the alchemist being able to throw items. So if I quickly cheat, I forgot to equip this guy with an item. 
And so if I just like heal get potion. get the heal potion on this guy, um, and then that should show up because Chad's a really good programmer. So you see the heal there, but then hey, this one needs uh, needs anything, and then I can totally shoot this over here. So it has a thing too where you can't just target the ground; you have to right. target a spot. Oh right. So it's you know he he learned from the alchemist a little bit, but yep. not quite everything. And he attaches them <laughs> and to his shot, so he shoots them yep. farther. But and it has um yeah. again you know there's pluses and minuses to that. You can't throw it over walls, but you get a lot more range and and higher accuracy on it, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and then the last one that we did for this guy. This one's a recent addition. Down here, yeah, recent addition. We call this the crop duster. So this guy is a low damage shot. Oh, do you want me to shoot at that guy? No, it'll be more, it'll be better if we shoot it over here, right? So this is a low damage shot that when you shoot it, it plants seeds as it flies and it'll actually, uh, there's some placeholder effects here. That green gas is looking a little weird. Um, but that will uh, provide like the evasion boosting stuff. It's very much like the fertilizer flask. Again, you know, Hunter Alchemist, like learning from, learning from the uh, partner and stuff, and if you see this guy, he's obscured, so it has that like huge 20% evasion bonus while sitting inside of uh, the trees. Right, that one's limited use. It's a bit like the um, fertilizer flask, mm -hmm. but with a little bit of a hunter twist on it where it does it in a line rather than an area. It's really nice for approaching a target that's, now you can move your melee guys up or you know yep. bring your alchemist up a little closer in range, still give them the coverage, as opposed Chad, to like just generating around the enemy. So. You can almost see your, uh, the, is that, the, is that Brezenim's uh, algorithm for uh, detecting where to place Oh yeah. Things? You can almost see it like, this is, they should use a C, this is an educational thing too, yep. Chad. You could give this at <laughs> school lectures. So that should be pretty fun. It was a nice, uh, it's a great, uh, nice to pull that off the alchemist. And, yeah, you know, that cover thing helps. At first it was just gonna be a shot that did Area explosion like the it just one. right, right, right. But this seemed more fun. But that one didn't. It, it didn't seem to make as much sense because you were like shooting your own guys with it. You know, right. that was the thing I didn't really want. Is that it felt? I don't know. We still have that with the health potions. For some reason, that doesn't bother me as much. You shoot your guy with a health potion, whereas like it's the alchemist. Shoot. He doesn't care about friendly fire. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so let's check out cheap. our alchemist flavors. Uh, alchemist hunter. Okay. So first things first. Our regular base alchemist. Here's Basil Scarheart, looking good. Um, so, so if we take this, we have uh, jacked up the base alchemist throw to be a three by three bomb. Um, you know, we there were a lot of reasons for this. Like, like again, people have always thought that alchemist is the worst class. Um, so we're trying to buff it as much as we can. We always wanted it to be the AOE class, and it felt like the plus sign explosion <coughs> was just it didn't feel like AOE enough. Um, so by doing this, hopefully we make the character feel a little bit more like... Um, it really does make missing a little bit more interesting because before, if you missed on a diagonal, you wouldn't hit at all. You wouldn't hit at all. Now right. you still kind of hit a little bit more, yep. even when you miss. So rather than just make him miss more often, which is no, no fun really when a player misses an enemy, now you can still miss, but it's not necessarily a complete failure. You know, it's like right. you might hit it off to the side or you might hit a few guys you didn't expect or hit that exploding bush in this case, like, but um, it doesn't feel like you completely missed. So it's, yep. it's, it's neat how it does that. It also gives you one extra range on the diagonal, I found, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but it makes it if you have a melee guy up next to the enemy, you have to be a little more careful. With the plus sign, you could kind of offset it yep. and not hit the guy if you were accurate. Um, with this, you might have to push it a little bit further or push it to the side a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, makes the alchemist a little more. I also like. But I think you know, it takes them in the right direction. You really had to work for your uh, double kills and triple kills in the All game. Right. And uh, one thing that I noticed, you know, upon playing it a lot, watching other people play it as well, is that oftentimes you get the uh, one, uh, two up and one over, or one over and two up, the knight. Um, yeah, kind of like chest that, uh, knight formation, right? Those guys and that's are, actually, are, yeah, you can see this yeah. right here, is that this is exactly what I'm talking about, is that with the plus bomb, There's you no can't hit, hit both guys, and right. it feels sort of frustrating. You're like, they're so close together, like, how do I do it? And then even with a Caberjack knockback, it's very difficult to line them up, because you'll knock this guy in the diagonal, and he'll just go all the way over here, and then they'll still be, like, one up and two over, or knock this guy, you know, it's like, oh, it's like, you feel like you should be able to smash them, your, you know, it feels like you should be able to AOE them, and you can't. And uh, now you can, which feels really good. Um, 
Fred, does this give you any concerns about making the uh, the AOE like kind of like the OP on it? Like, is it like? I mean, we didn't increase the damage it does. It's simply no, the shape no. it makes. It's just the shape it makes, yeah. and that that will just make like double and triple hits. Uh, and quadruple hits. Like, I guess you could hit nine targets at once, but uh, just through playing the game. Final battle that might come in handy. <laughs> final battle, it might be, yeah, it might be really, really good. But it's like Alchemist, you know, it's like we had to do a bunch of things to make them viable in the final battle, so yeah. I, I'm not too worried about that being over, feeling overpowered. Um, yeah, it's really just like the shape of the explosion, so um, I think it's going to be fine. I think that you'll just like, when you miss, you'll still get more hits. Um, uh, the limited ammo is another thing that people point to a lot when they talk about the Alchemist. That's and true. we didn't want to change that because it makes them feel unique. You know, it makes them feel so much different than the other classes. Um, we kind of wanted to keep that uh, as a mechanic, like as a concept in the game. So it was a way of like making those bombs more powerful. But not. It's kind of cool because like when I fictionalize Alchemists in my head, I always like, I always give them like, they're kind of like, you know, a little more ivory tower type guys, kind of solo dudes who are kind of eccentric weirdo type. So it's like, it kind of fits with that. That's kind of cool. It also let us do, so So before, the Alchemist had the plus bomb, so I wanted the Alchemist Hunter to have uh, what we call a precision flask. And so you can see that is now the plus flask. So right. this was only a single target. When we first put it in. It was right. an explosion mm -hmm. that hit one tile, and it felt so limp. <laughs> it felt so yeah. not fun. It was just it like... It was tough, because if you missed, you completely missed. Yeah. yeah. Any miss, you would never actually get a hit with it, and it was just it just felt kind of crappy. Um, so we were like, okay, if we if we increase the the flask for the base uh, alchemist, then the hunt the alchemist hunter can have the precision one, which is the um, the plus one. Um, and the other thing that we wanted to do is at level four, so they have like an insane increase in um, in their range. I love it. It really makes them feel artillery. So mm -hmm. so the um, the base alchemist has this Spirit of the Dark Falcon, which is um, range and accuracy. And so this one is just pure uh, pure range. That's it. Right. Pure range, and I believe it's like four range. Right? I believe right. it's plus four. Yeah, the other's so like plus two or something. If we get this guy, so this is like a base alchemist throw, like ones that that's not upgraded, and you get seven, and so he's like forty-seven percent way out. And then here's this precision flask. You can throw this all the way out here at these guys. But again, this is the thing: is that like if this was a three by three, I'd be able to hit both of these guys. Since it's a plus, I can only hit two of them. That um, does a little bit higher damage too. With yeah, the plus. yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that's really rad that like you get. Ah, you didn't miss. Wait. Yeah, he did, he did not miss. Um, so that that's super cool. That's sort of like the core of the. Um, is this gonna work? Yeah, I feel like that's not working. Um, I thought I got rid of all those when I new save games. I was using the debug menu to set all this stuff up. I could have been worse, Chad. Um, okay, so uh, precision flasks. Um, uh, still get the free throw, which is nice to have like two precision flasks if you want it. Alchemist Hunter, yeah. Um, that strong arm, we talked about that, so that's a plus four range, which is really huge. Um, that's opposite second item, though. Very similar to the, to the base trade Alchemist. Trade yeah. Um, we put hearing up here. Hearing on an Alchemist is awesome because if you're on the other side of the wall and you see the guy, you can just throw a bomb right on top of him. It's great. Um, that's opposite throw items. So you lose a little when bit you start of mixing there. in some Alchemist hunters, that means if you bring him along, you may not have to choose hearing on him. I like to have mm -hmm. at least one guy with hearing yep, in my too. party, but I don't always want that to be my one hunter I bring out. Now that hunter, you could, you know, choose a different side. Instead of hearing, you could, you know. At pick up, put it down, or something to make him a little more offensive. At level eight, we actually replaced both of these because we thought that the um, uh, the shoot and scoot from the hunter would be really cool on this guy, especially with the uh, with the free throw. So you can free throw, hit a guy, get a little move, get a short move, and then either do a melee attack or throw another bomb, hit a guy, and then you get another move. So you become really, really mobile, kind of like bomber dude if you take that one. Um, and then this one, this was like. Kind this of sweet. Awesome. We were like, hell yeah! Like, let's put a smoke bomb in there, um, so you can throw this, and it'll actually put all of your characters into stealth. They get hit by it. Yeah. Um, That's the best. Which is awesome. Like, it lets you have, uh, you know, hide other characters. It's like a really defensive thing. As long as you don't move, even if you're not a hunter, you'll just stay in stealth right. indefinitely, which is cool. And this one I'm liking with the caberjack. Uh, with the with the caberjack hunter right. is that. Even if he's spotted, you can have uh, you can throw one of these bombs on top of him, stealth him, and then he can do his cool sneak attack like for a ton of damage. It's, yeah, it's it feels a like super a, rad it's way. a cool combo. Um, cool. I think that's everything on the Alchemist Hunter that is new. 
but I've been messing around with that guy and it's super fun. Um, this is the Alchemist Caber Jack. So Alchemist Caber Jack, uh, first of all, we have knockback bombs, which are super fun. Like, whoops, should be right here. Knockback flash, so that will do enough to kill him. But if it didn't, I could throw it right here, knock him into this, uh, into the wall and take additional damage. I made a like sweet gif of this one in the update where I set oh, yeah. up like a thing where it, you know killed like a ton of dudes by yeah. like knocking dudes that into other sweet. dudes. It's awesome. Um, that's fun. So that's kind of this alchemist kind of learning from the caper jack and picking up some of that you know knock things back control stuff that the caper jack has. It does a little less damage than a regular shot. You can see that hearing there, which is cool. Um, we wanted to focus more on melee. Um, also, these are like really high level characters that I like. I'm launching into like the second battle. I, I kind of cheated to level these guys up. Um, but yeah, the, we really wanted to focus more on the melee stuff uh, with this character. So at level two, we were like, what if you didn't have free throw? Like, what if we actually took that away? Um, so you see that right over here. Um, what if what if this class actually didn't have the free throw and had a more like um, double, you know, like a double attack, kind of like hunter rules with follow up, except it was we're calling this hack and slash because it's like an homage. Nice. That's just gonna kill the guy, right? I should spawn yeah, something yeah, that can actually guy. take it. Um, so if I just like drop a cradle in <coughs> here, that'll have enough uh, life. Demons. So drop one of these guys in there. Just get him, get him with the old hack and slash. We're gonna have an additional animation for this, but it's sweet that it gives you, you know, like doubling your melee output on a. Um, uh, on a cooldown, feels really good with this right. character. Same thing with the um, bulwark. You might be able to get two hits in before your armor's up. So, as a melee attack, that's kind of unique. Yeah. Um, and then up higher on the tree, we have like an AOE melee attack that you can do, and that's really useful when you uh, you're totally it'll be useful here. Yeah, it'll be useful right here, won't it? Um, that's useful, like yeah, just when you're out of flasks. It's super awesome to like have an AOE option still available to you. Um, and that was, I was thinking also, we have a, uh, you know, the, the, the caber jack mm. has like his log jam, the AOE thing. I was thinking of increasing the AOE on that one and making it not damage friendlies, but then this one, we mm. can have it actually be, be tight like it is. This, we're calling it slice and dice, that's the worst name. So we need a new name for this one. Um, but this does, I think it's about 75% damage in an AOE, um, which feels really good and it's, you know. I'm really liking this class. I usually play, uh, like dual wielding rogue. Most times I play adventure games, and this guy's feeling a little closer to that. Feel, yeah, like not tough with a big broadsword or giant caber. But there was also, um, I guess this is a little bit of a spoiler. I guess there aren't. I don't know if you're watching this, but uh, <laughs> we want um, on this character specifically. I really wanted to have um, the taunt up here. So at level six, instead of the throw items, you get the, the prime target. The reason for that is that you have the, um, like if you have the armor, so we can change it out right now. So if you have that, this one, right? Like the volatile carapace thing. Oh, right. Being able to taunt a ton of enemies to come and attack you, and then every time you get attacked, you're gonna set off that explosion. Super awesome combo um, in the game, just like, because you know it, it taunts in like a huge area. So if you have a bunch of melee guys, they'll all come up to you, hit you, trigger the explosion, um, and then they'll take it. It'd be sweet. Did it, it didn't actually hit that guy, did it? He was in the fog. Uh, it did. Oh no, not not the rupture. It hit the uh, cradle. Did that not damage that guy? That's crazy. I think we have a bug. We'll have to see. Let's try that again. Let's try oh. that again. Brad always likes to show. <laughs> oh, bug. Let's show that. Yeah, bug oh, again. it's a bug. Yeah, let's yeah, show this yeah, bug yeah, on the yeah. stream. So this is going to go off, right? Maybe he's got resistance or something like that. Oh, man. Maybe it's just the plus. I'll have to look back and see. Yeah, that one, it should. it's definitely supposed to be a 3x3 three because three you can get hit by a, um, a melee attack on the diagonal. Or maybe he's got resistance. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he's got resistance. I don't know. Check that one out. What else we got, Brad? That's crazy. Let's move along. I think that, uh, <laughs> let's, move, let's move along from all these bugs. Yes. Um, okay, cool. Actually, I think that that's it. Do you want to show the uh, armor stuff? Yeah, I thought we grabbed Jeff, Jeff uh, to that? go through that stuff. Can Is there any other? Oh, the only other thing that we wanted to show 
really quickly is we start a new game now. Yeah. So this is very similar. You uh, pick your, your bloodlines. And then you're presented Look at with this. this. What's this? And you, you get to pick your, uh, uh, this is still in development a little bit, but this is uh, where you get to pick the first five characters that are going to go into your Vanguard. So the top one is going to be uh, what we call the core bloodline. And if you have the back of Relic, which we're also working on, uh, thanks for backing, um, that will be added to your account and you'll be able to toggle that on and off on the previous screen. And then this is the character that will get equipped with that. Um, right. So when you click that, you get into like our, our house picker here, um, and it's really a big, rad. Big shout out to Silvio. Silvio, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's been, been cranking on this, and, and Derek with working with him on the design, but uh, this is something we've wanted to get in for a long time, and very key to having people do their own bloodlines. They're going to want to play their own bloodlines. Yep, yep. So, and you don't have to do that hack anymore. You can actually just, that's, that's you know, true. use and this And it's thing, been really fun. Awesome. Like, even though we've played the game, what, millions of times, I don't think I've seen every single sigil, so. Nope. There's Coming through bottom, here, you yeah. see a lot that you didn't see, like little lightning bolt one in the yeah. bottom left. Like, I'd pick that one. That yeah. was pretty cool. It looks really rad, right? Look at this dragon one. That's also, so it's cool. called Wang. Wang, man. Which is yeah. fantastic. So we've got a bunch of options on here. First, the alphabetical on the left, and that's by the house name. But, uh... How many Zs do we have? Wow, we have a lot. A lot of the two pages. Oh, a couple pages here. of Zs. Oh, I like this one. Yeah, there's just, there's just so many that are looking, um... That are cool. It's really nice to just like so we added page some through the database, search, which is kind of fun. Oh yeah, this is great. So you can search for. Is there a Dawson in here? Uh, I think there is. There is. Look at that. Yeah, and then bam, there you go. What my dad did actually. So look at that. And then we can cancel that out. There's also the other one that you put in there. If you search for. Uh oh. Should work for you. Search for a wolf. It actually yeah. gives you the ones. Like it's actually searching for. The and you names. can see under every letter but X, there's wolves. Almost everybody came through with People a, love the wolf. People man. love the wolf icon. And so this is actually searching sort of like the, you know, more or less the common name of the actual, um, right. of the you icons got, you gotta that, show, that were used. you got to show my search I made Silvio do. What is it? The not wolf. Not wolf, right. It, it supports this as well. So if you use the, uh, <laughs> the exclamation sign, that's like, I don't want any wolves. <laughs> so there will be no wolves in here. Um, but yeah, that's cool. So it's pretty fun. It, people will be it's able to find to their find own them. stuff, and then you can just easily like go through. Uh, yeah, it there's searches sort of like, through mottos and battle cries. It's so. like a spin for just like the random ones, and we're like, oh, that one's cool, cool. Um, and so it's kind of cool that you can you can also set. Let's see, was that Noctis? You can set two of them to be the same if you want, and those will be guaranteed to be siblings in your Vanguard, and we'll leave this last one empty. Right. And so I should have two Noctis, and then again, if I had that, um, what do you call it, uh, that backer relic, it would go on to this K right here. Um, and then we'll get a sweet anime. Right, and this yeah. has uh, some of the experimental stuff we're trying with the balance start. People right. have been requesting where you're guaranteed yeah. to get one of each, each class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something that we've seen come up a lot, and uh, there will be an option to turn it off, but it's going to be on by default. You'll always get, like, so you can see, hey, it's working. We haven't tested a lot, but it looks like it's working. You got one Caberjack, two Hunters, and two Alchemists. Seems pretty balanced. And then back home, you should have uh, the ten characters that are in the capital right now. Right. Those will be um, roughly balanced between the classes as well. And, got two of that, and I got two of these Noctis, Noctis and, they're, um, and they should be siblings as well. Yep. Cool. Yeah, Olivia and Veer. Um, so it's fun. It's, it's sort of character customization. Yeah, it yeah. lets you it lets you select some some stuff that you think is cool at the beginning of the game, and then you can start those bloodlines and keep those going like throughout the whole thing. So that will be in this update as well. Okay. Go get Jeff. Yeah, why don't you grab Jeff? And if there are any questions. Yeah, um, we have got. Uh, So I already asked you about the hybrid names. As I've been, we've been doing more, the question's more in real time this time around. Uh, so I'll try and find some general ones that came in. Uh, here's one, are we thinking about a short key for saves? I know that sounds like a mundane thing, oh. but it's one of those things like, it's like cup holders, it's like, yeah, yeah. I, get I feel like we should, you just want like an auto save? Like, a, like an auto save? I think so, like, like save, quick yeah. save thing? Yeah. I think that we can do that. The problem right now is that we don't allow saving during the enemy turn. So I don't know if anybody right. noticed, but you can't actually hit escape during the enemy turn. And that's you smart, like, though, right? Because you have to like ride it out. Um, yeah. We only want you to save when you're in control, so that we can restore that state. And there's some, you know what, Chad just left, but I'm sure he would tell you. <laughs> yeah. He would tell you the technical reason why 
it's a huge pain in the butt to sort of restore the game when the enemies are thinking and taking their turns and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just much cleaner if we can be like, yeah, you just, you're not allowed to do that. Sure. Um, so it would have to give you some feedback for like, oh no, this is bad. You know, like this didn't work. Like yeah. you hit the quick save and nothing happened. So it'd have to do the fart noise and give you some. Uh, do you think like sad trombone, like big red stop yeah. sign? Yeah, yeah. That's why I don't do UI, Brad. Uh, I know. I that's, always mess yeah, it up. That's what it would be. It would be a sad trombone and then a. Uh, um, yeah, we just, we, I don't know where that comes from, the fart noise. We always refer to it as fart noise. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's a good question. I think it was a Psychonauts thing. The, um, the other one is from uh, Dr. Block 42. Um, do you have an idea of how to solve a problem? Like when you're, when you're like, when you have, a, uh, you have to choose a hero as a region and there's not really great options in terms of like, these guys are all like asthmatic, slow, and stupid. Like, mm -hmm. shit. Um, do we, have you, that's a constant problem. It's also part of the game. It's also part of the whole yeah. mantra of like, deal with what you get. I mean, what are your thoughts? You on can I'm you can always. Um, I, I definitely have, like sure. you. Uh, part of it is that it's like you know how much are you really keeping tabs on like your retinue and like their ages and their stats and stuff because you could probably go back and look at it. It, it probably would have been better to recruit heroes first and then start building once you like know who you're gonna put in that house. Sure. I think it just sort of like forces you to think a little bit more long term, which is kind of what the game's about. I think yeah, if you yeah. find yourself in that situation where you're like, okay, um, everyone, uh, like I just completed the keep and then, you know, it takes you in there and it's like time to appoint somebody, you can just not do it. You can just wait. So what you can do is just back out of that screen, it'll take you back to the capital, you can immediately start recruiting dudes. As soon as they show up, hopefully one of them will be like better or you know have another battle where you get a reward um, right. go through a battle get a reward maybe you get like a younger caber jack that's like really high you know that's like pretty high level you're like good he's got good stats awesome and then throw him in immediately and get it going yeah and that, recruiting really yeah exactly. and the recruiting yeah that's really like um, there's a lot of options I what I like that I've experienced is like when I put my just I'm a player hat on not part of the team hat like, yeah <laughs> I like the fact that it's like this is what it looks like this is your player hat it is yeah it's not part of the team hat it's not yeah yeah uh, designed <laughs> by Jeff Solis himself <laughs> welcome Jeff yeah, welcome yeah. Jeff to team stream um, oh one other way to do it is that you can take somebody with really bad genetics but a decently high level and throw them in in as the regent and then adopt some somebody. Yeah. Give them an adopted baby. That adopted baby will have randomized genetics. Maybe they'll be better. I mean, hopefully, that, you know, if it's like an asthmatic, sickly, like <laughs> slow, whatever, you know, hopefully, when you get a, a an adopted baby, it will not have, you know. I take that shit Spartan style genetics. and just leave him in the woods. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then that's how you can like continue that bloodline in a better way yeah. and, and get it going. So, um, yeah, welcome lead, lead artist Jeff Solis. Hey. Welcome to Team Let's Stream go. number thirty. Jeff Solis. We should um, be able to put babies into the lash. Yeah. So <laughs> Leonidas became the king of Sparta. <laughs> so I thought we would talk about some of the art that is coming on. Here's this one. Uh, I loaded up this sweet matrix. Sweet matrix of all the um, all the caber jacks. <laughs> is um, it the matrix? This is the, yeah. The, I can't tell you what it is. Um, I just have to show you. And this is it. So right here you have the um, down the middle of this thing you have. So this is basically the three types of caber jacks like this. So this is a pure caber jack. This right here is a caber jack hunter. So you can see like the feathery shoulder pad over here. And then this big ass feathery shoulder pad. Actually, I'm just gonna use the debug camera to cheat. You can sort of see this like sweet, kind of tribal shoulder pad on this dude. It's awesome. And then over here, this is the Camber Jack Alchemist. You see like the bottles on the arm and stuff. Uh, That's always sort of been there, but but he has other things like his skirt is kind of different. His legs are like a lot less armored than the base Camber Jack. Yep. Which, you know, arguably a little harder to see. Because it's you, know, you, can see, you never see their you legs. You know, I mean, you do see them like, <laughs> like on the uh, equip screen a yeah. lot. You yes, know? that's and very I, true. And that is sort of like why I'm uh, why I'm zooming in. But you know, you can definitely if you look at these three guys right here, you can definitely tell them this, uh, tell them apart. And these two characters even have like green as their base color, right? It's mm -hmm. like their cabers look exactly the same. But you can see, um, I mean, they're you know based off that that this brown shoulder pad here, yeah, and then yeah. this guy's got the. You know, I think that there are enough differences that it really works, and you you can tell. Here's the level two versions. Um, so this is like the beefed up Caber Jack Hunter, and then there's the beefed up Caber Jack. Pure Caber Jack is like the tankiest of all of them, right? Yeah. And then here's the Caber Jack Alchemist, again, like pulling in more 
parts of the alchemist uh, outfit. Except for his flincher, that dude was a stud, man. Bear, bear strength. Uh, oh, oh, you, I was, you know, I was just looking purely at the visuals. You were looking over here. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so here's like the the mega tank, uh, Caberjack level three armor. I really like this one. This is the Caberjack hunter armor. So this takes a lot of that cross hatch pattern that you see yeah. on the hunter armor and and puts it on this guy, which is sweet. And then here's uh, that mega level three uh, paper jack alchemist. I didn't realize how one. golden god it's that guy It's super was. gold. <laughs> it's super gold. I love it though. It's got you know it's got the it's got the Midas touch on it. Well, man. I tried to make it so if you looked at all three of them, they would sort of have a different color scheme. Um, I can load up the other one. Here's the hunter armors. 